I am absolutely distraught at what is going on in our society. If you haven't heard, there has been a shooting by a transgender woman in a Christian school where three children were shot and three adults. And by the way, I am praying for everybody involved and my heart goes out to all the victims and family and friends uh, that are involved in this. But either way, the mainstream media is not really giving you the full story. And in today's broadcast, I'm going to give you the details, the before the during, the after information that they are trying to keep from you. Well, as an alternative media source, I am not going to keep that information from you because there are things that transpired on that very same day uh, that you need to be aware of. But let's start first with what transpired because I think uh, this is, it's just a heartbreaking story, but take a look. New York Post, at least seven dead, including three kids after transgender shooter opens fire at Nashville Christian Elementary School. It goes on. Seven people were killed, including three children, after a transgender woman opened fire inside a private Christian elementary school in Nashville on Monday. Police said that they received a call at 1013 in the morning about an active shooter, later identified as Audrey Hale, at the cover at school with police rushing to the scene to clear the halls. At the scene, police heard gunshots on the second floor and rushed to the lobby type area where they came across the 28-year-old who was strapped with two assault rifles and a handgun. The shooter had killed three students and three staffers before she was fatally struck by responding officers at 10.27 a.m. When police searched the shooter's belongings and home, they found detailed maps of the school and and a manifesto. They claimed at a press conference Monday evening, Hale also targeted another school, but aborted those plans because it had too much security. That's why we should put armed people, armed security guards in our schools. Hale had no police record or record of mental health problems. However, when asked if Hale's identity as a trans person played a role in the deadly shooting, Metro Nashville Chief of Police John Drake said, there is some theory to that. We're investigating all leads. Now, on top of that, it has also come out that the shooter uh, used to attend that school. She is a former student there, and it could be likely that this was a targeted attack of that Christian school for that reason. Take a look here. NBC News police chief tells NBC News a sense of resentment may have fueled Nashville shooters attack at the former school. Now, that means that, again, this could have been a targeted attack against a Christian school, which it could come out later that that could be for the Christian beliefs. And in that case, this is harassment and targeting of a specific religious community and specifically Christianity. I myself am a Christian. This is heartbreaking. Now, footage has come out of the Nashville shooter. I'm not going to play it here, uh, but breaking Nashville police release surveillance footage of the transgender student inside the school. You can see her on the screen there. And by the way, I believe they also released some of the footage from the police, uh, the police you shot or the um, uh, cameras that they have. Uh, but basically this footage shows uh, her going through the school, shooting up the door to get inside and then walking down different hallways uh, to get her victims. Absolutely heartbreaking. And that's why I just can't show it here. It's just very, very sensitive information. But on top of it all, the mainstream media, the sickos, I'm sick and tired of this. Instead of like, um, giving condolences right off the bat to the family, uh, they're automatically playing the blame game for Republicans because Republicans support the Second Amendment. No joke. Take a look first at what Joe Biden had to do. Joe Biden actually cracked a joke about ice cream before even discussing and talking about Nashville. Here we have New York Post. Biden makes ice cream joke in first statement since Nashville shooting, and not just him. His Kareem J. Uh, Jean Pierre, his press secretary out there, also went out there, and instead of offering condolences to the family, she just went straight and said, we should, you know, we should ban uh, assault weapons. Here she is, Jean Pierre weighs in on school shooting in Nashville. How many more children have to be murdered before Republicans in Congress will step up and act to pass the assault weapon ban? 
again. So instead of giving condolences to the family, she goes straight on political, blame it on Republicans, start banning assault weapons, which they can't even uh, describe what those are, but they're not the only ones. Here we have ABC's Terry Moran, who ties the Nashville school shooting to Tennessee's recently passed legislation, banning the harmonization and mutilation of minors. So what he's basically saying here, oh, this shooter shot up a school because, you know, they passed a law against, you know, hormonizing and mutilating mutilating children uh, who are under age. That's why there's so much anger. I mean, this is sick and disturbing, but that's not all. We also have Representative uh, Don Boyer here saying something's deeply wrong when a drag show is seen as dangerous and threat to children, but an assault weapon is not. I mean, give me a break. Then we have Washington Post contributor just thanks someone who posted that the Christian school in Nashville that was shot up today was a religious indoctrination center. So a Washington Post writer says, oh, thanks for saying that. I mean, really? In the middle of a massive tragedy, you're going to make that? And here is Hayes Brown. You can see the author of this article, Six Dead in Nashville. Let's revisit how much the Tennessee GOP loves guns. Excuse me? Had there been guns there, this likely would not have happened anywhere near what went on. But either way, they're seizing up the opportunity to attack people rather than comfort the victims. And here is NBC, uh, Ben Ryan, a contributor there. NBC has identified Nashville shooter as Audrey Hale, who identifies as transgender, no previous record. And by the way, Nashville is home to the Daily Wire, a hub of anti-trans activity. So in other words, because Daily Wire there, it's their fault. Now, the only fault is the freaking disgusting person who went into that school and shot up that school. That's what's disgusting and that's what's wrong. Anyone who murders children are downright horrible, mental, sick people. And you know what's even more disturbing? The events that transpired before the shooting even took place. Take a look at where I found this information here. And this is on Andy No, a Twitter page here. And he says this, in recent months, rhetoric about carrying out revenge and vengeance on society for some states restricting the medical transitioning of minors has surged. Through his reporting on Antifa, he's long observed that disproportionate numbers of violent Antifa members are trans. Still, their rhetoric has become more openly violent recently as they feel emboldened by Democrats Democrats and the mainstream left. Now, here is actually the trans day of vengeance that they called for. Uh, and vengeance is a really terrifying word. Uh, are they are they planning more than just peacefully protesting? It's a question. And here it is, April 1st. And then we also have this. This this is obviously calling for action uh, and violence. This is a very violent shirt. And then we also have a trans person here uh, saying how they can use bricks and they're going to use bricks if they need to. And then, of course, Lori Lightfoot, just as a reminder, she says the Supreme Court is coming for us next. This moment has to be a call to arms. This is straight up calls of violent acts. And I'm against violence no matter what side of the fence that you are on. I am completely and utterly against it. It never, it's a horrible thing, a horrible thing. And one has to ask the question, what on earth is going on here? And look, if you want to be trans, go ahead. I don't care. Great. More power to you. I'm a, I'm a libertarian. I believe that you have a right to do that. However, when you're under 18, and we're talking about just minors here, they can't, they can't, you know, they can't get behind a car and drive. They can't get alcohol. They can't vote. There's a lot of things that you can't do as a minor because you're not yet mentally developed in the way that you should be as an adult. Do what you want after 18. And I think that's where I stand on that. And yet we have literal calls for violence. But with that, I want to just remind you, please get to RestrictedRepublic.com. If you are not there, please get to Restricted Republic. Look, I created this because of all this crap that is now going on in society. And we are going to get you the nitty gritty of what's really going on. Use the coupon code FOREVER and the number 50 to get it for $50 per year. This is an amazing website to go to. We've got exclusive information. Uh, Justice Knight put out a huge report in today's broadcast. You're going to want to see it. But get to RestrictedRepublic.com and check it out today. Uh, uh, because that is where 
we're going to land when the crap hits the fan. So get to RestrictedRepublic.com. But either way, did you know that on the very same day as this shooting, there is certain information that the Biden administration doesn't want you to know about either? How about the fact that on the very day, very same day of the shooting, 16 ATF agents decided to go after one of the largest gun stores. Take a look here. And thankfully, G the GOP intervened. Here we have the Gateway Pundit. 16 out-of-state ATF agents visit and intimidate popular gun store in Smyrna, Georgia on same day as Nashville school shooting. And they got scared off by GOP Congress members. Here's the actual interaction. I'm going to play it for you. Take a listen. Yeah, that's why it seemed like there was a little well, How long have y'all been in business for 25 years? 45 years. 45 years. 45 years. This is not a new business. 45 years. Their FFL was renewed in September. So this 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 is a flagship type of this this business. Their flagship. These owners. I mean, they have basically set the standard on the four check system, which makes it completely. It's very odd for them to be treated this way. Or hopefully they're not being treated. Oh, it is very odd. You're absolutely right. Absolutely right, Marjorie. And here's what she put out on her Twitter page. Members of our Georgia delegation were present for an unprecedented ATF inspection at a longtime and well-respected adventure outdoors in Georgia. After we questioned their motives and informed them of oversight and Republican-controlled apparitions, they all left. Protect the Second Amendment and the law-abiding businesses. Coincidence? On the very same day, let's just send out 16 ATAF agents out to the biggest gun store. I, you know, the, is the ATF being weaponized by the Biden administration and the Democrat Party? I'm starting to get the feeling so. Now we got the ATF, but hey, while we're on this topic, it's not just the ATF. How about the fact that Matt Taibbi, on the very same day he testified to Congress, the IRS went after him. Just another sidetrack. I'm sidetracking a little bit, but I think this is very important. This is on Fox Business. Uh, Substack writer Matt Taibbi says IRS visited his home while he was testifying in Congress. Wait. And, and by the way, they went to his home and knocked on his door. I, I, I've never seen such a level is this the new level that this you know eighty seven thousand irs agents that have been hired by the biden administration are these part of those irs agents that are going to go knock on the door of citizens now to intervene on the same day this is not america this is a third world country this is what they do in third world countries they weaponize agencies uh, like the IRS, like the ATF, like the FBI, like the DOJ against their opposition. Again, I have to tell you, please get to Restrictive Republic because we are putting our butts on the line doing what we do. We are putting ourselves at risk of things, of, of being in full sight, just like Matt Taibbi. He's a lot bigger name, but hey, the IRS went after him because he exposed some information that they didn't like. Get to RestrictedRepublic.com. Use that coupon code. We really are on the front lines here. But either way, kind of going back to the topic on what's going on, it's heartbreaking what is happening to, to, to the school. And it should really be seen as an act of terrorism against a religious institution if that is indeed what happened. I mean, we're still waiting on the information. I'm not going to tell you it is or it isn't because I don't know the information is still waiting. But we do know that was a for former student and we do know that there uh, was likely some kind of grievance in, or targeted attack in some way, shape or form, considering there was a manifesto, which they have not yet released. Maybe they will after the making of this video. But either way, there's a lot of stuff going on. Anyhow, I love all of you. Thanks again for tuning in. I'm Lisa Haven signing out.